Right. So the freeze dryers had plenty of time to defrost and dry. Uh, it's been overnight. I'm going to get it set up for the next batch. I'll get the baffle out of the door and get a thermometer underneath. And then also I'm going to use a damp paper towel and carefully wipe the seal. It looked like there was a little bit of stuff on it. And I just cleaned it a few batches ago, a couple batches ago, so everything looks good. Uh, here's the water from that last batch of refried beans. And about three quarters of a gallon, a little bit more. People have asked about using the water, and usually we just pour it out either on plants outside or down the drain. Because uh, to me, it smells like... Um, to me, it smells like really old ice. So if you had ice in your freezer for months and months and it kind of stale ice, it picks up all the odors from everything else and melts in your glass and it has that odd flavor. Well, that's what this smells like to me. So I never use it, but it's probably safe to use, but I don't know. So I just pour it out or pour it on plants outside, whichever is most convenient. Now on this batch, uh, Kid One is taking over the freeze dryer and freeze drying a bunch of soft, chewy candies and things. So they can be used to share with friends and, or snacked on. But that'll be a real quick batch and then we'll get back to other things. I think I've got some more refried beans or chili still to go. So still trying to clean up some of those things from the big batches that were cooked earlier during the series and right afterwards. Okay, so get this cooling for the candy and the newer machines have a candy program and so it's very fast and I can kind of mimic that with this machine by getting it cold first, putting my stuff in, the food in there, the food, the candy in there, and then bypassing it, uh, the main cycle and going to final dry so that the heaters are on and it warms up quickly under vacuum. And it helps them expand well. Anyway, that speeds it up. Usually we haven't done that because we don't usually do whole batches of candy. Uh, usually it's just a tray of candy with other things. So we just let it go the whole cycle. But this time it's going to be a whole machine full. And as soon as that's done, then we'll move back to other foods. So I'm going to make sure that the drain valve is closed. With the drain valve closed, I'm going to still run under customize. And, and I think it suggests higher temperatures too, uh, that theirs is like 130, 135 or something for their candy one to help them puff up. I'm going to leave it at 120 because we've seen that that does well. And I'm concerned that I'll forget to set it back uh, for the other foods. So I'm going to just start custom on that and continue. Oh, I want to make sure I have a seal ring all the way around there. And it looks like we're missing a spot here and a teeny spot there. So I'll use my palette knife, give it a little twist. Okay, we've got it there. And then... Alright, so now we've got a seal ring all the way around there. Don't have to worry about air going in there. And I can try to film a little bit of the candies while it's through the door. So I might try that. All right, so when that's cold and back from our walk, we'll put things in. So the freeze dryer has been cooling for just over two hours now. It says it's negative 26. And what I was after is the barrel getting down to the negative 40. And because I have a thermometer underneath touching the barrel, I can tell that it's negative 40 or maybe a little bit colder. So I'm going to go ahead and start it now and then I'm going to skip the main dry time after a short period of time and go to where the tray heaters are turned on and drying and see what happens. So I've got it set up with my light in the window um, and the black velvet over the top so I can get the camera in here without so many reflections from these other lights and see what we can see. I did not move the rack 
a shelf in there to raise it up to see in there better because I didn't know what to expect and I didn't feel like moving it because I want to start another batch as soon as this is done. Uh, the other batch will be chili or maybe more refried beans and chili, whatever I've got still waiting in the freezer. So let's get it started. I'm going to go ahead and bypass the rest of the freeze time because it's cold enough. Okay, I'll make sh double check, make sure that the um, drain valve is closed, and it is. And turn on the cooling fan for the vacuum pump. Okay, let's see what it happens. I'm going to go ahead and bypass the rest of the main dry time. So now it's in final dry which means the heaters will be on more to keep the temperature up. And we'll see what it does. been a total of seven hours now so three and a half of the freezing the pre-freezing and then the freezing and then three and a half hours of the freeze drying all on the final dry cycle all oh I let it get down to pressure first for a half hour so then it's had three hours of the heaters on uh, now we're gonna bypass the rest of the time get them out and check them because it looks like on the video that they might have been done uh, two hours ago. So let's get them out and check them. So I'll bypass the rest of the time using the down arrow and I've got a long ways to go because I had it set for an 11 hours final dry because I didn't change it from the original uh, drying time. And I'm trying to be careful not to hit the cancel button. Now, we will open the drain valve and because we haven't done them this way before, I'm still going to put them back in for an hour or two to check to make sure they stop losing weight. But we'll break a couple of them if we can to see if they feel like they're already dry. I suspect they are already done. And that'd be great if you wanted to do candy and be able to do them in just a few hours like that. Okay. Oh, this smells good. It smells like candies. Okay, tray one. Ooh, it smells like nice and toasty. Yeah, we'll get tray one. So it's only two grams down. 931. Interesting. Now, um, I'm going to still swap tray positions like I usually do. So, whoa. And that shows us it could still put more of them on a tray and not have them hit each other. 952 so that's down 12 this one has less stuff on it by volume maybe these just aren't as much water i do like how the multicolor with the laffy taffies like really showed the two colors yeah so it looks dry it yep. feels dry i think wow. they're probably done already I'm really curious to know if those actually... Those are squishy. Yeah. Ah, these are kind of chewy feeling. They're not crunchy like the other ones were. And I don't have a knife, so I'm trying to cut through it with a, a palette knife instead. Huh, it's like the core is still... Chewy, ah. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so it's got a chewy kind of texture. But yeah. again, some sugary things do. And then when you let them cool, uh, some fruits even. Um, trying to think of which ones. Anyway, so then when they cool, uh, or when they're still warm, they're pliable. And then when you let them cool, they become completely hard. Uh, I was trying to think of which candy or which fruit was that uh, did that. Um, I think, what? Pineapple, definitely. Yeah, pineapple, maybe mango. So one of these. Yeah, I'm just being very curious because they were the Starburst. So like, oh, well, they're definitely harder than they were before on the outside. There, it snapped one in half. Wow. Feels completely so dry and hard. Yeah, no. they didn't poop up very much. No, they're like a tiny bit bigger, but not much. Those look hard. Those look neat. So it's got a hard shell on the outside and then like the stuff on the inside. Okay. Yeah, that sounds dry. That's neat. Okay. And those look completely done. And these are squishy and gushy. Wow. And it could be that these have different kinds of things in them and not water, because that's very soft still. Okay. Those are still soft. These other ones seem to be done. These are kind of a chewy texture inside. Oh, but it's getting harder now. So I think it's be maybe these are because uh, of it still being warm. That's what it's like normally. They're sour packs, but they're peach ones. So they're kind of like peach rings. I can okay. find peach rings, so I got these. Oh, those are good. Mm -hmm. huh. I thought they were really good dried. So did we try one of them? haven't tried one of them, right? Okay, those are good. They're finished and, and nice and dry looking. My hand's not in the frame, there it is. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if this is because they're uh, the warmth. Okay, well, let's give it a bit more time. Oh, well, we still need to get the other ones out. So, we'll put these back in. We'll check them, and but they're going to give them a bit more time and find out what they do. Okay, tray two, I'm going to put up one spot. And tray one will come down a spot. So, everything that started on there is still on there. They're just broken up a bit. Yeah. Okay, and so this is the same as that other, those few? Yep, those are all lots of Okay. So tray three, 936. So that's down 13. So they definitely dropped a few. And there's those stuck. Nope. And then tray four. Oh, they 954. Okay, I'm gonna guess that's because they were soft and pliable at the time and had air, and so yeah. then they got squished. Okay, and those went down eight. So okay, let's so give those a look. I'm gonna set that in there. And let's give this a little bit more of a hands-on choppy. choppy look. My turn. Okay. No, oh, that's still very soft. Okay. And so these the worked great. And they didn't stick together, even the ones that were touching. The inside's drier. Okay. But like the so the you could put off. these two, four, six, seven. Probably. So you, you could get really you could get at least ten across if you wanted to load these up. So that would be good to know. Yeah. And you could get at least so this could have been this other direction still and still fit. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you could get a hundred yes. of them on a tray with no problem the of this size. The yellow 
pooped up the least and the light can poop up the most of the solid color. Okay. They're still done. Yep. Um, they seem the to be done. The color, the pink around the blue poop up, those are not done. Whoa. I think it's again that type of candy because the outside of these aren't done either. Oh, that's interesting. Those basically did nothing as far as dryness. Did they change shape at all? Mm -mm. Okay. And then these were and then really these, soft, but I think they're like, you get take a minute before These they remind me, if I have a marshmallow that's not completely dry, and you let the pressure back in, they'll collapse yeah. because you got an air bubble inside, right. so I'm and then it collapses. Yeah, yeah so these will, pro because we took them out, they probably won't reinflate all the way. Right. Some of them clearly dry more than the others because they stay more cool. Yeah, like okay. so the inside got harder, but the outside is just soft. And okay, so the outside's more like that yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is more like the other gummy things. I'll too. be interested in taste testing some of these when we get. So I'll get these back in there so we can get them out and taste test them. Mwah! <laughs> Yeehaw! And then tray four will go up one. And tray three will come down one. So we'll get that closed back up, close the drain valve, drain valve is closed, and we'll get it started and add a couple more hours and then taste test it. I'm going to assume that all of the water is already out of those and the ones that are still pliable are a type of candy that doesn't get dry. Uh, it has a formula that's not a water-based thing, so there's nothing to pull out. And so they're going to stay chewy. That's my guess. But we can try some of those later. The ones that don't seem to dry here, we'll put them on the trays with a full long batch and see if giving it 30 or 40 hours works. I suspect it won't make a difference. Okay, so we're going to give it more dry time. I did close the drain valve. Continue. And it's already cool enough because the fan's on it. And start. And it'll show two hours. We'll come back in about two hours and check it. And taste test it. Wow. This part part. Yes. The candies have had another hour and 50 minutes now. Uh, the heaters turned off five minutes ago when it got to below 15 minutes. And one of the types way in the back is the one that collapsed last time. So I'm going to put the camera right here when we reintroduce the pressure and see if they collapse again. And if they're still squishy and soft, they will probably collapse. Uh, so in the future, we might try some of those by letting it cool more first before we take them out or dry them a lot longer before we take them out. Because marshmallows will do something very similar to that. If they're not all the way dry uh, and you let the pressure back in, they will collapse some. And unlike these, usually they won't puff back up. So this is promising. But I expect they're going to collapse. So I'll get the camera moved to here first, and then we'll shut the machine down by using the rest of, or using the down arrow to bypass the rest of the time, and then let the pressure in. See what happens. Going to bypass the rest of it. It's still toasty warm. Let's see if I can get a slightly better view. Oh, that's slightly better. I agree. And you can see them more directly, right? Right. I'm so I'm going to start letting the air in very... So I'm going to do it slowly, relatively speaking. Okay, air is going in. And there they go. The ones that stayed better the first time around are staying pretty decent this time, too. Well, it's still got quite a ways to go. See how wide that seal is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll let the rest of it in. I'll get this turned off. Anybody know where the button is? No. There. I can just leave that on there for right now. Let me take it off. Take care of that later. We're going to check the weights of these. And we might not even care. So, get this open and check it out. So, tray one 
Let's see how that changed, if anything. Uh, it did change. So if I were doing with this amount, with regular freeze drying, I would 100% put it back in. It dropped two grams and there's only, there's less than 200 grams of material here. That means it lost more than 1%. So now that we've checked, I can eat one? Nine twenty nine. You're happy with it? You're yes. not going to worry about it any more than that? Okay. So let me get the tray two out. And that lost one or two grams. Yeah, so I would say it needs more than that initial time but nowhere near a regular freeze drying time. And it would be interesting to see how much this one loses. Uh, only one gram. So the Laffy Chappies that were the driest were in fact... The most dunnest, up. yeah. Okay. I think this one will change the most. And three grams. So do you want to... So we'll take these over to the bagging area and decide what to do with them because I'm going to have another batch going right away. I could always take an area of a tray and put some things on that you're interested in and they'll go through an entire batch cycle. We'll get those over there and at the bagging table and look at them and decide what we're going to do with them. In the meantime, I'll leave this closed because it doesn't need defrosted before I get the next batch in there which will probably be chili or refried beans or maybe some of the candies or a combination of things. The time on this is nine hours. This includes freeze. So nine hours, 12 minutes total. And the power usage, I'm not gonna bother showing it. It'll just write it down. Uh, 4.949 kilowatt hours. Then we'll reset this time and the power usage before we start that next batch. So now we'll get these moved over. There's the four trays, one, two, three, and four. These two lost 14 grams each and appeared to be um, slowing down on the losing weight. So they seem to be fairly dry, but I think in general, a couple of more hours wouldn't hurt anything. These two trays lost less and this one the least. These don't appear to be dryable, uh, whatever they're made of. And these don't seem to dry, so they must not have water in them really. And the outside layer of this seems also to be similar to that. The inside is dry and powdery and trying to escape but the outside is chewy still. So interesting. Overall success rate, what are these? The Laffy Taffy. The Laffy Taffy seem to work perfectly, even the two color kind. And I suspect is this Laffy Taffy? No, also? those are high chews. Okay, so these were a little bit different, but it seems like they worked okay. Tastes like flavored sugar. I wonder if it's because it's flavored sugar. The last so I suspected would work because of previous having seen them places. And, and the inside is even harder than the outside. And these, oh, and these were, what are these? Air something. Starburst air. Starburst airs. So these blew up like a balloon and then deflated when we let the air back in. They seem like they will freeze dry, but I think they need a good long time under the vacuum or under vacuum before the pressure is let back in and then it might work but i'm not real sure because they still are quite chewy on the inside so those maybe they'll work maybe they won't so this kind does not appear to be worth freeze drying because there's really no moisture in there that goes away those. same with these Everything else seemed to work to some degree. These have some potential, but they may not work. Everything else seemed to be okay. 
These are odd because the outside stays softer, but the inside is very light and crunchy. And the different flavors puffed different. a different amount. The pink puffed the most. And we saw that with some of the other things before that we did where the different colors or flavors were vastly different on how they acted. These look okay. like a piece of chalk now. I like those. Wow. Which, which one did you try? I tried the grape. Okay. Was it grapey? Mm -hmm. A yeah, and those came out very nice. And the plan on this batch is none of it's going to be saved in mylar bags. We're just going to put it all in zipper bags and they'll be experimented and taste tested until they're all gone. We're going to go ahead and just throw another batch of the Laffy Taffy in there because number one child was really happy with it and so wanted more of that and then we'll do some experiments with the other ones some other time. We have a braided one and a twisted one and some various other shapes and mostly straights though. So these are the way they came full length. And on our previous batch, we did a uh, measuring and they should be able to fit 10 across without any big trouble. So it should be plenty of room and these will be ready to take out tomorrow morning. And because we gave it the extra time and then weighed them, we know that it was almost complete. All the Laffy Taffy ones were pretty much completely done in about seven hours. Well, they'll have at least 10 hours by tomorrow. Uh, in fact, the final dry is set for 11. We'll just go ahead and let it do the whole 11 hours or whenever we're ready to take it out uh, past the seven hours. So it should be all good. And the freeze dryer is already cold, so it won't take any of that time for cooling. So actually that would save three hours right there. We're gonna get the weights on those and then moved over. Tray one, 11.41. So quite a bit heavier than the last time. More Laffy Taffy for more fun. Tray two, 11.71. Tray three, 11.09, 11.45. These are all ready to go in there and they'll be done tomorrow morning. And there we go. There, that's better. The little eyeballs and a funny little grin. So those are ready to go in. The Laffy Taffy is on the trays, ready to go in there. Uh, and then as soon as they've, the barrel is cooled all the way back down to the negative 40, we'll get it started. So probably a half hour or something like that. And then we'll switch it right to final dry and get them puffing up and drying. Okay, so get this. And I've got do I have tray four? Yes. Oh, okay. So tray four. Okay, and three. And two. And banana. All right. So we'll get the drain valve closed. And we'll make sure we have a seal ring around there, which we currently do not. And it's starting to ice up. The seal's getting very cold. The seal's basically so cold it stayed back instead of springing forward because uh, it just didn't have any time to warm up. So I'm going to double check this. Um, so we'll be back in the morning. Oh. No, we need to restart this thing. So first, let's go over and restart the power meter. So we'll get the power meter. That was the what's uh, the power from the last batch. And the cooling unit's running, so it's using about 316 watts. We're going to reset it for this batch. And again, it's using that amount of power right now. Now we'll reset the freeze dryer. To restart this and reset it, I'm going to put no defrost. 
which will stop it and then I'll immediately restart. I'm not going to mess with the heater temperatures. This is one thing I should definitely experiment with with the candy because that might help it puff up more if we give it more heat early on because uh, then it would soften it more I think. But I'm not going to do that because I'll probably forget when I go back to the regular foods. But that would be one thing that would be interesting because I know the candy cycles for some of them they use um, up to I think 150 degrees. So I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to start custom. Continue. And we've already decided we do not need six hours of freeze time. That's for normal frozen food. Uh, regular room temperature food you might need 8, 10, 12 hours of freeze. Our regular frozen food is usually 6 or sometimes as little as 4. This stuff doesn't need anywhere near that. And as soon as it's cold enough after the, this, when it starts actually drying, I'm going to skip to the final dry as soon as I can. Is what is the temperature right now? It says 30 below at the thermometer underneath. So that's the one I really want. Because this temperature, the 27 degrees, is the temperature probe on the bottom of the second tray up. Well, we just put food that's room temperature in there, which is about 70 degrees, 75 degrees, in comparison to where we want it, which is 40 below. We've got a 110 degree difference, so it's scorching hot by comparison to what we want in there. So it's going to bring that temperature up a bit before it starts to drop again. So I don't really care about that temperature is what I'm saying. I'm going to go by the thermometer that's underneath the rack in the, on the barrel. Number one child's Laffy Taffy has been in there for 13 and a half hours or so. We gave it extra time overnight. We know from our other experiment that this only takes five or six hours total, including freeze time. And we had already pre-frozen this because we didn't stop it from the previous batch. So it didn't even need that time. But we let it go overnight just for timing reasons. So we don't even have to weigh this to do a weight check to make sure it's dry because it's been dry for hours but we left it running under vacuum to make sure that it wouldn't uh, cool down. And then when we take the trays out, you would get condensation on the Laffy Taffy or on the trays and then it soaks into it because that would be disastrous. So anyway, now we'll take it out. Uh, we will get a weight on it, but we'll do that at the bagging table and we'll get them bagged. So I'll bypass the rest of the time, make it nice and quiet. I am going to leave this running though because there's almost no water or ice inside the barrel so it's ready for the next batch uh, right now so I don't have to defrost or anything so I'll just leave it running we'll take the stuff out though okay open the drain valve okay so we'll just take all the trays oh they're they're beautiful Wow. <laughs> yeah, these might have stuck together. Those, th <laughs> this variety uh, with the two color gets bigger and poofier. So those could be interesting. Wow, oh, that's neat. All right, the braid came out nice. Okay. So put the disc back in place so it can start re-chilling. The thermometer underneath says that it's 20 below right now. And we'll make sure we have the seal ring around there so we're not leaking air in there while it's re-cooling. Because it won't take long to get it reset for another batch. We just need to get this stuff bagged, the trays emptied, and new stuff on the trays. Now, we can get the final weights, and we don't have to worry about, like I said, I didn't do dry check weights because it just didn't matter. Those are absolutely beautiful. 
None of these stuck together, even where they were touching, but they had room to move, so that's not terribly surprising. These might end up a little different than that. Ten, oh, that's interesting. Oops, I'm going with 89. But that's interesting. Those had a lot more water in than those. I think, well, now I have to do the math real quick. This lost 82 grams of water. This only lost 24. These, the inside or something, one of these components has a lot more water. Especially because there's... It's more than three times the amount of water. Oh, they're, they did not stick together, at least those. So they're kind of sticky together, so they were touched, but they come right apart. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. I was afraid that they were, were stuck. But they're very mildly stuck. It's not a problem. That, that's great. Cool. They looked okay. a lot cooler than that. Yeah. Okay. I got to get the other weights. Let's finish these up. 10... 39 it's bouncing from 39 to 40 I'm gonna use the 39 and last tray four 11 18 okay well I can finish that math later doesn't really matter for this I'm never going to want to put the water back in but if you were doing lots and lots of them and they were very uniform you would be able to tell just by putting them on the scale that they're already done, I think. I will wait All for right. the pink has the most water overall because that's poopier. Whoa, that broke with very little pressure. How interesting. Well, yeah, these are fragile. Feeling these are not as fragile. Yeah, because that broke, I mean, just setting it down basically at an angle. Yeah, these are great. Look at that. That's neat. Beautiful. Okay, let me get this out of the way. On these, going to bag most of these in these little short term storage bags. I wouldn't use these for long term storage they're not good enough for that but they're great for weeks or months maybe even a year or two for some products but i wouldn't consider these anything close to a long-term storage but they're beautiful i mean you put some of these in there and look at that you get to see them i mean it, it's a beautiful pack and i'm just putting a few in there you don't have to leave them this way these are going to get bagged this way and then going to seal it carefully between this little tear off and the hole and that works pretty well because you can just put it around the sealer and you can show a bit of that after these are in the bags the only downside of this kind of bag that doesn't have the gusseted bottom is they don't stand up uh, so when you're bagging a bunch of them they kind of are you need like a box or something to stand, stand them in otherwise they're just laying around on the the table so next, bag these babies. So how you bagging them? Um, I think I'm gonna go by flavor. Okay, so not that. I eat correct. That's beautiful. It is. <laughs> but these already have both of those flavors. Oh, okay, how about this? And for Halloween, ah, my fingers. <laughs> going to start sealing these and I'm going to seal it right across here right above the little notch but below the uh, hole and because these are basically sugar I'm not going to worry about an oxygen absorber either there's really nothing to go bad with these we just need to protect them from any moisture from the air I don't know if we can if we can show that on there 
but there's the seal right below uh, the hole and right above the little tear-off notches. And the yellow on yellow would have been better with the black bag on that one. Yeah. But that's beautiful. Yeah, look at that. The purple in the gold bag is wonderful. As I mentioned, each bag got sealed right above those notches and below that hole, so it can still be ripped off and still has the zipper spot. Okay, that's it for Laffy Taffy. Laffy Taffy works fast. It's pretty cool. They get pretty fragile. Yeehaw! But they still hold their shape well and yeah, they, they work out great. So we'll be getting stuff on the trays for the next batch soon. and go to where the heater trays, the tray heaters are.